style. Number three, Pelotonia is efficient, a cornerstone of our brand. Now, movement is that 100% of every dollar we raise goes directly to research. Four, we are cancer people first and cyclists second. Five, we understand how devastating cancer is and the effect that it has on the survivor, our families, and friends. We take care of each other. We are kind and we are compassionate. Seven, we win as a community. Our community consists of the 31 states represented by riders here tonight. Tonight, five years later, we have riders from 41 states and nine countries. And finally, we understand this disease can be beat, but more needs to be done, a lot more. So it's really important that you never forget those. It truly defines your Pelotonia. Each year, we produce a short film. Last year, we sent our buddy Woody across the country to encourage people to get involved in the movement to end cancer. Tonight, we look forward to easier times. Today, and it is a big one, folks. Cancer researchers announced today that they finally have what they believe to be a cure for cancer. Doctors feel confident that a recently developed vaccine will eradicate the disease. Now, as you would expect, this news has set off both celebrations and skepticism around the globe. I have great news. Your scans are clear. Your cancer is cured.
Tanya has raised millions for cancer research at the OSU Comprehensive Cancer Center with what has become one of the largest fundraising bike rides of its kind in the country. Tomorrow kicks off the fifth annual Pelotonia ride. Okay, we've been riding hard for five years now, working towards our one goal. Five years, over $60 million raised. We're not done yet. Until we really have a cure for cancer, we can't let up for even one second. So congratulations, you've done a great job so far. Now let's get back to work. it we continue to have a goal and we're going to get there together at this point it is my privilege to introduce our speaker Thomas Mannion started his career in the United States Marine Corps retiring after 30 years of service as a colonel in the Marine Corps Reserve Tom joined Johnson & Johnson in 1990, and since has held leadership roles throughout the organization with a strong reputation for delivering results. As Chairman Emeritus of the Travis Mannion Foundation, a nonprofit organization founded in his late son's name, Tom has worked broadly by conveying a sense of sacrifice and public service in all that we do. We are honored to have Tom here tonight, and we invited him because he is an advocate of our movement. He is one of us. He is a warrior. Please welcome Tom Mannion. Okay, let's hear it for Columbus, Ohio. Well, uh, as Tom shared, I'm, I'm actually from Pennsylvania, and you're not going to like this, but I grew up a big Penn State fan. But, but there's no, no bigger Ohio State Buckeye fan than me tonight. What you guys are doing here is amazing, and I'm just honored to be here. I... Uh, I want to start off by thanking Tom and the Palantonia group, the James Center, and everyone that's here for what you're doing. And I can't think of a more significant thing that we could do for this world than to come together and end cancer once and for all. So I am, I am truly honored, I'm humbled to be here and be part of the team. Well, we all, we all have our journeys in life. And for our family, it took an incredible turn in April 2007. On the 29th of April, my wife Janet and I lost our only son, Travis, to a sniper's bullet in Iraq. He had pulled to safety several Marines and led a counterattack that ultimately saved the lives of the entire patrol that day. He was the only one that didn't make it back. And for his efforts and for his actions, he was awarded a silver star for bravery in combat. But for our family, it was our worst nightmare. And we weren't sure how to go forward. Travis had always excelled in everything he did. He could have done anything in life, but he chose to enter the United States Naval Academy. And with graduation, a commitment to service. From there as a Marine, he was a Marine's Marine. He always led from the front. But if you talk to people about Travis, they'll say that it was really his selfless nature that inspired everyone that he touched. And so it was my wife, Janet, 
to look to his words to help us pick up the pieces as a family to move forward. Before Travis left for his second tour to Iraq, when he was asked why he had to go back, his simple but powerful response was, if not me, then who? And so Janet took that and, and she started the Travis Manu Foundation. And before long, she had motivated others in support of our military veterans and families. And she got up every morning inspired by Travis's words and rallied others across the country, not just for our military community, but in their honor to make a difference for others through service and volunteerism. Janet rallied the office, and every day she, she'd show up, and nothing brought a bigger smile to her face than to see all the good that had come out of this loss that had literally shook her world apart. She could now see a reason to move forward, and she could use that spirit of Travis to make an impact and a positive force for good in the world. At that point, the If Not Me, Then Who movement had begun. And over the next several years, she rallied everyone and supported communities through service and volunteerism and also directly supported over 18,000 veterans and their families. And this was, just, this was just one woman with a passion and a determination to make a difference. And unfortunately, in September of 2011, we got word that Janet was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Shocked but ready to fight with so much more now to, to live for, Janet took on cancer with a fierce determination and grit. And she rallied the office every day to still support the foundation's mission while she silently battled this deadly disease of cancer. And on the on the 24th of April, 2012, close to seven months after we got the news, and almost five years to the day from when we lost Travis, we lost Janet to her courageous battle against cancer. So my daughter Ryan and I continue forward, always with Travis and Janet in our hearts and with their selfless nature guiding our actions. I'm reminded of one of the last days with Janet, and she was in the hospital room, and we got a call from a local college. They wanted to recognize her for her efforts with supporting the military with an honorary degree. She was in ICU at the time, and I wasn't sure she was up for it. And when I asked, she, she nodded yes. And, and we had the president of the college come out and read the beautiful citation about what she had done. And to a hospital-filled room, to everyone's surprise, she asked for a sip of water. She hadn't spoken in several days. And she said at that point, this isn't about me. This is about so many other people that stepped forward, so many volunteers, friends, and family that have answered the call to make a difference for others. Well, there wasn't a dry eye in that hospital room that day, but there was a clear message about the human spirit and a realization that if we work together, we can do amazing things. I'm also reminded of an email we got from our son right before we lost him, about a week before we lost him. Travis and his Marines were in the critical area of Al Ambar province where the Marines were just starting to turn the tide there. And he said in his email, as in anything in life, true success does not come from battles won easy. Well, we all know this challenge in front of us is not going to be easy. This, this cancer is not going to go away easy. It's going to take everything we've got to come together and to make this happen. But what you've started here is special. You set an example for so many in leading the way and the way you've come together, the way you've stood up as a community, the way you've answered the call, the way you've come together to make a difference, not just for Columbus, Ohio, 
but for this world is awesome. So I'm honored to be here. I know if my son and wife were here today, you wouldn't find anybody riding harder than Travis. He'd be riding side by side with you tomorrow, and you wouldn't find a bigger fan than Janet as you cross that finish line. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you're doing and how you're making a difference in this world. But I also want to challenge you. You've started something big here, and we got to keep it going. So next year, I want you to reach out and bring somebody else with you so we can double what we've done here today. And we can continue to send a message to the rest of the world that Columbus, Ohio is going to do it. And when you're, when you're hitting that hill tomorrow, that last hill, if you're having trouble getting up it, and the following day when you're just too busy to reach out and enroll others to this cause, remember to ask yourself that question, if not me, then who? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great ride tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a great ride tomorrow. God bless you and your families. And thank you for making a difference. Okay, buddy. Thank you, Tom. I right, Pelotonia.